Well, hypothesis testing in linear regression models. First, I want to talk about what is hypothesis uh, testing in a uh, intuitively comprehensible and same time conceptual manner. So what is hypothesis testing? Well, hypothesis testing is to provide some evidence that uh, the fact of interest or the slopes of interest uh, exists, okay? But the challenge is a lot of times we cannot prove uh, that in fact exists or uh, an association exists. What we usually do is to prove that the converse is wrong. That is, the non-existence of such a fact does not hold. That naturally lends itself to the proof that, uh, well, the fact or the association uh, does exist. So what we're going to do is to set up a straw man. So logically, we're going to assume something, something that we dislike. For, exa for example, the slope does not uh, have, excuse me, a variable does not have an effect on the response variable. There is no association. In most cases here, let me uh, emphasize, in most cases, we want to have some effect uh, to exist, right? But in other cases, we don't want. But let's assume, you know, uh, we prefer that some association or some effect uh, exists, right? So, uh, so the first step is to set up a straw man I want to assume something that we dislike as true. So we're going to begin with the converse of what we want, right? So that is assumed effect. And let's call that assumed fact A. Then from assumed fact A, okay, we can necessarily get B. And they're roughly equivalent. So from logic. Okay, so from A to B, A is what we dislike, but let's assume A is correct. And we can go from A to B, um, and they're roughly equivalent. That is, we can go from A to B and, uh, and reversely B to A. Then what we're going to do, we're going to check B against data at hand. Okay, if the data do not match what is implied, suggested in uh, the assumed fact B, then that would imply B is wrong. And probably A in turn, very likely to be wrong too. So let's consider the hypothesis, right? And, uh, and uh, the non-hypothesis is the strong man. And in non-hypothesis, usually we say, well, uh, the slope coefficient for the kth variable is zero. So there's no effect uh, of this xk on the response variable and, uh, and in the population that effect is zero. Well, beginning from that assumed fact, okay, that is if the non-hypothesis holds, there's no effect, then the error terms are normal. Here I'm talking about epsilon. And then beta zero, beta k is zero. And from this fact, we can derive t statistic, which turns out to be equal to beta k hat, that is estimated, right? Uh, beta parameter for the kth variable xk. Right? And that should be, in this case, OLS estimator minus zero and divided by the estimated variance of beta k hat. It follows a t distribution, t distribution with degree freedom equal to n minus k minus one. And here n is the total number of cases, the sample size, and k is the total number of predictors. And we have additional one here for 
uh, intercept. So for the uh, unit column, okay, for the unit column. So from here, assume fact A, uh, equation one, we can get equation two, that is assumed fact B. Okay, then what we're gonna do? Well, we have a T distribution, right? In the middle is zero, assuming the beta K is zero. And T statistic follows a T distribution. Okay? And if the T statistic is in uh, either of the tail, right? And here are mark uh, T statistic, uh, negative 1.96 and part of 1.96. Uh, and these are uh, the values uh, beyond which, so for negative 1.96, uh, here I'm talking about region that's more negative than negative 1.96. And here, uh, the region that I just talked about is the region beyond 1.6. So the two regions beyond uh, the two critical T's. When the T statistic, or T statistics fall into those, what we call critical region, who would argue that it is unlikely to get those T statistics, okay? If T follows this distribution, right? Because they're in the tail and usually it will be more likely for the T statistic to fall in the middle. But if, they, if the T statistic falls in uh, one of the critical regions or the regions that uh, T statistics are uh, not very likely to fall into, then we will argue that, well, probably, probably, um, it is unlikely uh, to get that T statistic. So that's assume factor B. So factor B, assume factor B does not hold. In turn, factor A does not hold very likely because from assume factor A, right? Hypothesis beta k equal to zero. We can derive this assumed factor B. And uh, here I omit a lot of uh, uh, mathematical derivations in between, but from factor A, assumed factor A, we can uh, get assumed factor B. Well, in this case, when t statistic, t statistic falls into the critical region, then assumed factor B is unlikely to hold, which in turn disproves assumed fact A. Then we can reject the noun hypothesis. Okay? And for a two-tailed test, H now is rejected at 0.05 level. Uh, when uh, the alpha is at 0.05 level for two-tailed test, and the critical T is negative 1.96 uh, beyond that region, okay? And the critical T uh, on the positive side of T distribution is 1.96. And beyond that T value, that critical T, uh, we call the critical region, okay? critical region. And uh, if T statistic calculated fall into either of uh, these two regions uh, for two tail test, we, we can uh, safely reject the noun, that is, you know, the noun hypothesis and uh, beta k equal to zero and can be rejected. And if past research or theory suggests the sign of the coefficient, a one-tailed test is used and a non-hypothesis will only be rejected when t is in the expected tail, is in the expected tail. For example, uh, if um, prior scholarship suggests that uh, beta is positive, then we just look at the positive side of the T distribution. And uh, usually uh, using a one tail test uh, produces results uh, that are more likely uh, to be in favor of what we want. So we wanna be careful uh, about using one tail test.